This bee is incredibly lucky. Why? Because it was supposed to die. Steve and I agreed to replace the word poop with beads in today's video, as there will be a lot of beads. And you'll be shocked to learn how insects use them, and why beads can kill the bees. Coffee time! <laughs> what do you call a situation where you don't go to the bathroom for at least a few months? Well, if you're a bee, that situation is called winter. Bees are actually incredibly tidy insects that maintain a strict order within their hives. As a result, they choose to relieve themselves outside the hive, often while in flight or on flowers where they gather nectar. Sometimes the bees can't make it to the flower, and then traces like that appear on the outer walls of the hive. Anyway, in the summer, bees typically have no issues finding a place to relieve themselves. But what happens in winter? If a bee needs to take a bathroom break in cold weather, the situation becomes life-threatening. There are two ways it can go. The bee can venture outside and relieve itself, but it risks succumbing to hypothermia. Since bees can't fly long distances when the temperature is around 50 degrees Fahrenheit, if they fly too far away, they may freeze and never return home. Alternatively, the bee could do its business right in the hive, but no one will clean up after it. Only queen bees have the right to leave their beads in the hive, but that's why they're queens. They have someone to clean up after them. Other bees, on the other hand, don't have access to that kind of service. Their unsanitary behavior can lead to the rapid spread of disease and the death of an entire colony. That's why bees have developed the ability to hold it in for months. They simply have no other choice. But imagine how happy they are when spring comes. Yay! It's getting warmer! Time to relieve ourselves! Only terminally ill bees have the audacity of defecating inside the hive. And yes, this dangerous behavior also leads to a faster spread of disease. Basically, only bees that have no way of getting out at all can defecate in the hive. Then there's the queen. Have you seen queen bees? They will never bother getting out, doing their business, and then getting back in. By the way, beads can appear as tiny yellow dots on the surface of objects. Sticky waste resembles small threads or spots of mustard yellow color. To avoid having to hold it in for months at a time, bees just had to get creative, like ants. Though ant nests are similar to hives in some ways, there's one important difference, toilets. A team of researchers studying ant bowel movement patterns found that insects like to deposit their business in certain corners of the nest. This fact surprised scientists because ants typically carry all their waste outside and dispose of it promptly, including corpses and food scraps. So why do ants deviate from this behavior when it comes to a specific type of waste? Hey, what you looking at? Eventually, the scientists came to the conclusion that if beads... <laughs> Steve, I'm starting to think this word replacement wasn't such a great idea. Anyway, if the waste was very dangerous to ants, they would get rid of it. But apparently that waste is non-hazardous. Or maybe it's needed for some purpose. We just don't know what it is yet. But there are several possibilities. First, ants may extract certain elements from the bead pile to feed young larvae, which require a different set of nutrients than adults. Second, ants can use the beads as fertilizer to boost fungal growth. Yes, in case you forgot or didn't know, many species of ants grow and harvest fungi for food. It's also possible that piles of beads have antimicrobial properties. Some insects actually use the waste products for defense or as a building material. Termites have gone even further. According to researchers who study termites closely, these insects make a kind of natural antibiotics from their own waste. Well, and antibiotics in turn make termites invulnerable to biological weapons that people have been using against them for 50 years. Over the past half century, more than 125 research groups in more than 35 countries have tried to develop fungi and bacteria to fight termites, but they've all failed. The reason is simple. 70% of the bacteria in beads are effective against a wide range of different infections. In this respect, termites are even somewhat similar to humans. The bacteria in the human gut also protect against many different diseases. Only in our case, it happens inside, and termites manage to externalize the entire process. And you know, it'd be nice if humans learned to defend themselves as well against all sorts of diseases as termites do, because mankind uses antibiotics too much when we could do without them. 
It's estimated that by 2050, antimicrobial resistance will kill 300 million people and cost the world economy $100 trillion. Not inspiring news. The shortage of new antibiotics and infections resistant to multiple medicines are a source of concern for doctors and patients, and there are fears of an antibiotic apocalypse. And that's where the properties of insect waste can come into play. They could prove useful in the discovery of new antimicrobials and probiotics. Imagine the headlines in the newspapers. Insect beads saved humanity. If they actually use the word beads, I'm gonna laugh really loud. This hornet has found a beehive and is about to bring in a whole bunch of its voracious relatives. But the bees have a secret weapon. Can you guess what it is? Who's that Pokemon? Hornets are very aggressive and deadly invaders of beehives. However, Asian honeybees have learned to defend themselves by smearing animal feces around the entrance to the hive. They could source them from chicken coops nearby. Also, it's quite challenging to coordinate a defense using droppings. This requires efforts from several workers at once. This bee was caught at the moment when it was preparing for defense, and guess what was in its mouth? Right, beads. And that kind of defense does work, although it certainly looks nasty. Especially if you know what the entrances to the hives are smeared with. You can see it very well here. It's estimated that hives with more fecal spotting are less likely to be visited by hornets. Seems like the predators are simply reluctant to chew or rub against the feces-covered entrances. Though that's hardly because insects are squeamish. Perhaps the smell of waste is just very unpleasant for hornets. Or it masks the chemical odor that hornets use to tag the hive for their nest mates. You know, so all the predators know who they're attacking today? What should you do if you're a delicious caterpillar trying to hide from a hungry bird? Use bird beads. This video is on its way to becoming a video about jewelry. It's important to not only disguise yourself, but to do it right. This caterpillar will be eaten by a bird, and this one will remain undetected. What's the difference if they both look like droppings? Body position. Survival lesson number one, look like bird waste. Survival lesson number two, color alone isn't enough. To look like a pile of beads, you have to actually become a pile of beads. That is, assume a certain position. Researchers positioned over 400 artificial caterpillars, some curled and others straight, on tree branches. These caterpillars were painted in either solid green or the typical black and white colors resembling bird droppings. Body position had no effect on the number of green caterpillars eaten, but straight black and white caterpillars were attacked almost three times more often by birds than curled ones. Turns out, position matters. Being a bead takes some skill. Okay, well, we've all sort of figured out the unexpected benefits of waste, but what about the unexpected harm? Over the centuries, the Taj Mahal has faced all sorts of threats, from yellowing caused by air pollution to wearing of its marble facade due to countless tourists touching the walls. But recently, the structure has come under attack from a new enemy, swarms of bugs breeding in a nearby river. Their beads turn the white marble green. Normally, flying insects are eaten by the fish that live in the river, but a combination of pollution and drought killed many of the animals that once lived there. Meanwhile, algae blooms and ashes from a crematorium that are dumped into the river have provided the insects with plenty of food. And now it's not just small groups, but entire buzzing swarms. When they pass over the Taj Mahal, their chlorophyll-stained waste imparts its color to the domed monument. Is that really such a big issue? You could just wash the marble and that's it. Well, it's not that simple. While beads alone cannot damage the white marble covering the Taj Mahal, wiping off the green-colored waste from the walls poses a serious problem for restoration artists. Such cleaning operations can damage the fragile structure. The neater and finer the ornaments, the more likely it is that frequent washing will harm them. But if you ask me, I'll say this. The Taj Mahal has stood for 400 years, and it'll stand for another 400 years. It won't be brought down by some bug waste. Though when it comes to the hippos, real problems begin. Researchers once noticed that every time the Mara River on the border between Kenya and Tanzania is rising, there are dead fish on its banks, sometimes thousands of them. Local rangers blamed the fish deaths on farmers spraying pesticides on fields upstream, except that farmers had nothing to do with that. Through increasingly bold experiments, researchers identified the real culprits, hippos. 
According to a recent study, hippos sometimes defecate so profusely that all the fish around them simply suffocate. Just by the looks of this water, you can see that nothing good can ever come from it. At night, hippos roam the pastures, and during the day, they return to the rivers to cool off and protect themselves from sunburn. But hippos don't just lie in the water, they also process what they eat, getting rid of all the waste. So it turns out that every day, about 4,000 hippos in Mara dump about 8.5 tons of waste into a stretch of river only 62 miles long. There's a reason zoos put signs like this next to hippo enclosures. Hippos are too good at removing waste from their bodies. During the dry season, when Mara becomes shallow, some parts of it become particularly full of beads. The silt and water at the bottom is a stagnant mess of ammonia, methane, hydrogen sulfide, and other chemicals you don't want to be exposed to, especially in that concentration. There's no oxygen either. Almost all of it's consumed by bacteria that slowly digest the waste piled up by the hippos. When the rainy season comes, it washes all this stuff downstream. These streams drastically reduce oxygen levels throughout the river to the point where the fish simply can't cope and suffocate. How about a bathroom disaster that sank an entire submarine? This incident took place in April 1945, just weeks before Germany surrendered in World War II. And no, this time there were no hippos involved. The German U-boat 1206 was cruising off the Scottish coast near Aberdeen. Among the U-boat's many technological and engineering advantages was its impressive high-pressure toilet flushing system. It ejected waste directly into the sea, even when the vessel was submerged. All other submarines needed to surface to do this. Unfortunately, this unique technology is what ruined the submarine. On April 14th, Captain Schlitt went into the deep sea bathroom and by turning the wrong valves, messed up the flushing system. He called an engineer to help fix the problem, but the situation got worse. Seawater, and with it what the captain was about to flush, began to flood the room. By some miracle, before the submarine sank, the crew managed to get it to the surface. Control was lost, the submarine couldn't move, and at that very moment, it was surrounded by British patrols. It was all over because of the toilet. The Bead Vault Have you heard about the seed vault that was created to preserve the diversity of our planet's plants? Well, scientists want to make a similar vault to store human bead samples from all over the world. By building this doomsday vault, they hope to protect the microbial diversity of the world. Researchers have also concluded that the rise in diseases including obesity, diabetes, asthma, allergies, inflammatory bowel disease, Alzheimer's disease, and autism may be linked to changes in the human microbiome. In layman's terms, the number of beneficial microorganisms in our guts has decreased, and there's nothing good about that. In order not to completely lose this important diversity, scientists want to preserve more beads. That's a great idea, even if it does sound a bit weird. Urinal Test Labs Photos of a strange-looking urinal in a shopping mall somewhere in Beijing's business district went viral online and sparked heated debate. Apparently, it features a digital display with a built-in payment processing unit that allows users to submit a urine sample after they've gone to the bathroom, which means the urinal probably has hidden sensors that analyze urine for a bunch of markers, including calcium, glucose, protein, and others. Information on the screen suggests that the developer has been granted several patents for the urine analyzing technology, but the accuracy of the results may cause controversy, and likely an outcry among lab professionals. A Millionaire Beggar An Indian man named Bharat Jain is being called the world's richest beggar after he amassed a fortune of a million dollars on the streets of Mumbai. The man was born into a poor family failed to get an education, and started begging on the streets. A sad fate, though not the most uncommon one. However, Jane's fortune is about one million US dollars now, and with such capital, his family is prospering. The man revealed that he earns about $728 a month by begging, which allows him to own a two-bedroom apartment and rent out his two stores for about $364 a month. Relying on the generosity of strangers, he can earn $30 in 10 to 12 hours. Yes, you read that right. Even though he's already rich, he continues to beg. Why stop if it works? An octopus in the esophagus. How about getting a new phobia? 
Doctors in Singapore were shocked to find an octopus stuck in a man's esophagus when they performed a gastrointestinal examination. No, the man was alive. He just wasn't feeling well, so he decided to get checked. The unnamed man from Singapore first realized something was wrong when he started vomiting after eating. When his condition didn't change, he went to the hospital and the doctors there did a CT scan. At first they found some kind of super dense mass, but then they realized it was a whole octopus. Apparently, it had gotten inside his body along with food and it somehow stuck to the man's esophagus in some unbelievable way. No, the octopus was already dead, it just stayed raw and that apparently helped it stick inside. In any case, it was a lengthy and challenging process to extract the animal using forceps after several other methods proved ineffective. The good news is the octopus was pulled out. This does it! I'll never eat raw octopus in my life! See you later.